bless you as you're joining on. Share this broadcast. Invite your father. Saints, bless you, everybody. Nice to see you. Just share this broadcast before. Say, Lord, I receive the prophet's reward. I receive the prophet's reward. Yeah. 
saints, everyone. Nice to see everyone.
Bless you, saints. Everyone, bless you. Bless you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Saints, everyone. Now, saints, watch this. Everything, everything, everything that you have been given, 
there, there is some things that God have placed inside of you that he, he lets it be there. Why? Because it's connected to someone that you'll meet. So here's what God would do. He knows that he's giving you a certain ability, but there's a strategy he uses to connect you to people or a person, a person rather. It's not so much people. People is more than one person. There's a person that God is going to use in this life to unlock you. It's a beautiful ministry. It's a beautiful prophetic ministry strategy that God uses to unlock you so that you can operate in what you have. Now, a lot of times there's things in you that you feel that you can do, but the unlocking is not there yet. And so like you have the desire to do it, you have the fire to do it, but you haven't found someone that you admire that does it. <laughs> because saints, you can't learn from somebody that you don't admire. You can't. See saints, I begin to learn from Jesus because I begin to admire him. I saw him in the scriptures. I begin to see him in the scripture. I begin to see how he moved, how he operated, how he thought. I begin to study Jesus in the word. And then I admired it. I said, okay, well, if it's possible for him and, and he's in me, let me start moving in it too. I started saying, okay, if he if he's walking around and healing the sick and raising the dead, let, let me let me start doing it too. Let me operate in the same realm of, as Jesus. Now, saints, you 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 gotta you gotta set godly goals for yourself and also embrace godly admiration. Because you can never learn from someone you don't admire. And see, saints, admiration is different from jealousy. Jealousy has an agenda. Jealousy will destroy in the midst of admiration. But divine admiration is something that's real pure. It's real pure. Why? Because you're in a place where you're saying, okay, I realize that God is doing something to someone that he's connecting me to. So let me honor them. Let me respect them. Let me stand around now, that's so powerful. It unlocks you. And saints, even what God will do, if he's going to unlock you prophetically, one of the ways that he unlocks you is by connecting you to the prophet. Now, saints, it, I was reading the text of 2 Kings. What was so powerful was we see that Elisha opens up the eyes of his servant. Now, his, his servant is following him, but his servant's eyes is not open up. So, saints... What you got to understand is sometimes even people that follow you, your eyes are not open up. You can be in the company of a prophet and still not receive the prophetic anointing. You can be in the company of Jesus and still not receive healing. You can be in the company of Esther and still not receive queenship. You can be in the company of Peter and still not receive uh, the Holy Ghost. You can be in the company of Apostle Paul and still not receive the apostolic. You can be in the company of uh, Ezekiel and still not be taken up by the Spirit of the Lord. You can be in the company of Elijah and still can't call down fire from heaven. You can be in the company of Moses and still never move with the glory cloud. Now, saints, there's a reason why there was a cloud by day and the fire by night. Because the fire by night, there's a lot of satanic activity and there has to be fire. Why? Because there has to be an intensity of power. This is the powerful thing. There was a fire by night. Why? Because God was intensifying his power. You must know this. When you're in a night season, God is intensifying his power. When you're in a season of night, what's a season of night? Meaning there's darkness. Uh... Satanic activity, blindness, uh, things that you cannot see. Uh, you're in a season where it's discomforting or, or discomfort, uh, or as it may be a lot of things that God will have you uh, be stretched through. That is where there's a fire. 
Now, saints, what's the powerful thing about it is that the fire, it represents God turning up his power. So, saints, there's a there's an hour where God turns up his power. See, saints, the power of God was not strongest on Jesus when he healed the sick. The power of God was not strongest on Jesus when he raised the dead. The power was strongest on Jesus when he drunk of the cup of the knowledge of good and evil. Saints, when he was drinking of that cup, that was when the power was the strongest, strongest on his life. It wasn't strong because he was raising the dead and healing the sick. The strongest level of the power of God was when Jesus was drinking of that cup. See, saints, when you're drinking of a cup, is a realm in the spirit where God intensifies grace. He intensifies his anointing. He intensifies his power. He intensifies his abilities in you. So you want to catch that in your life. You want to be receptive of that. You want to be receptive of the path to power. The path to the anointing. The path to be virtuous. Or the path to carry Jesus in a whole nother level. See, saints, there were people that wanted Jesus, but Jesus lodged himself in Mary. There were people that wanted the Holy Ghost, but he lodged himself in the upper room. There was people that wanted the apostolic, but he lodged himself, the apostolic, on Apostle Paul. There was people that wanted uh, the ability to... Uh, moving the spiritual, spiritual chariot, but he lodged it on Ezekiel. He lodged it on Philip. Now, you got to get to the place. What happens when Jesus is, is speaking to you more? There's an upkeep that keeps his voice so strong in you. And that's why Psalm 1-2 was telling you, meditate in his law day and night. The meditation of the word it causes such a strength of prophetic grace. A lot of times the prophetic grace cannot flow as strong because of your lack of focus, your lack of consistency, or your lack of just being in that place with God. Listen, sometimes God don't want you around people, but you want to be around people. I know a lot of people that say, oh, I'm lonely. I don't have nobody in my life. But listen, saints, most times that is where God begins the prophetic on you. God had Abraham sanctified to hear him. Now he had Sarah, but God still sanctified him. Why? Because he had to hear at another level. He had to hear at another dimension. And when you go to another level, another dimension, that voice of God, it needs your undivided attention. It needs your undivided focus. Now, saints, there's something that there's something that is happening in our generation that's causing so many people to be distracted on so many things, and they never explore the supernatural of Jesus. There's so much stuff that God wants you to move into and experience and 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 eat of. And taste of. There's so many things in the spirit realm that God wants you to start operating in. And there is a, there is a strong distraction that is going on to draw you away from that. Saints, there's so many things that happen throughout your day that brings you into concentration of that God don't even want you to be concentrating on. It just weakens your spirit, man. You have to guard your ears when you're prophetic. You have to guard your eyes. You have to guard your heart. Your inward man is the man that God wants you to protect while he protect your outward man. I want you to hear me. If you take a note, write that down. God wants you to protect your inward man. His job is to protect your outward man. 
Your job is to protect your inward man. So God wants you to protect what's coming inside of you. God will protect what's coming outside of you. That's his job. That's his realm. But he needs you to protect what's coming inside of you. If you learn how to be the guardian of your own garden, you'll never fail God. You see, saints, I made up in my mind, I was going to guard my, my, my garden. Your garden is your place where, where God is either planting thoughts or the devil is planting thoughts. Now, what I love about Samuel, saints, I want you to see this. Samuel, at a very early age, he learned how to minister to God. Ministering to God is a ministry in itself that you have to be distinguished to walk in. You can't minister to God if you're still um, bound by you and your feelings and your ways and your, your, your mindsets. For you to minister to God, you have to be in a real special place with the spirit of God. Why? Because saints, while you're ministering to God, you're also going to be in a place that you would prefer not to be. When you're ministering to God, there's a place of challenge that will be bestowed upon you. Why? Because everything in the satanic kingdom is going to try to stop you from ministering to God. The devil doesn't mind you ministering to yourself. He doesn't mind you ministering to uh, uh, your feelings. He doesn't mind you ministering to your emotions. But he hates when you minister to God. Now, even if you minister to others and you never minister to God, you'll become empty. The emptiness is where you don't minister to God. Samuel stepped into the prophetic realm. Why? Because he started ministering to God. Now, see, saints, what was so awesome was that when Samuel ministered to God, he became a great prophet. Now, see, saints, this is where it gets confusing because this is where people start asking, where did you come from? Or uh, who anointed you? Or who increased you? Or who gave you grace? Or who, who raised you up? And most times you don't, if, if you're a major prophet and, and you went through a process, there was a time in my life where I couldn't say, oh, I, I wasn't connected to anyone. I just sought the Lord. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon me while I am near. So what was going on? There are people that finds God through seeking him. Well, they seek God and God lets himself be found by them. And he begins to mentor them and teach them and anoint them and strengthen them. And saints, most times, if you study the life of, of such men or women, they are raised up to anoint other people. Whenever God sends a prophet to you, your anointing is changing. Now, if you don't be conscious of that, you'll miss mantles. Mantles come from the man of God you're connected to. Now, see, saints, I want you to hear me. I've learned that there are more than one mantle that you can move in. You know, some people say, what you're anointed to do? There, there can be a manifold ministry birth out of you. As a matter of fact, the more humble you become, the more grace God will give you. That's why the Bible says he gives grace to the humble. Because he's giving you. Then what did uh, Peter chapter 1 verse 3 said? I think 2 Peter. Chapter 1, verse 3, he said his divine power has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. So this is a transfer of mantles. You can receive more than one mantle. There is not just one mantle that you can walk in. There's more than one mantle. Sometimes you settle for one mantle, but God want to increase you to the next. What did the Bible say? It said, to whom much is given, or, or uh, he that is faithful over a few things, God will make him rule over much. 
Saints, how was Elijah carrying the double portion? He had his portion and he had Elijah's portion. What was the disciples carrying? Disciples had their anointing and they had the anointing of Jesus. They had their personal anointing that Jesus gave to them and then they had the mantle that fell when Jesus died. Now, saints, there's something I want to I wanna start talking to you about in the seer's anointing. Because the more your eyes begin to see in the spirit, the more God will have you not see in the natural. The seeing in the natural is actually an enemy to so many people when God wants them to see in the spirit. Saints, God was raising up Moses to be a seer and he ran from God for 40 years because of what he saw in the natural. He saw, he saw people coming against him. He saw people talking about him. Then he ran from God for 40 years. So the things that are in the natural will stop you from seeing. And this is something that you, you're going to have to catch in your personal life. Saints, I don't, I don't want to see everything. There are things that I have access to that I can see, but I just choose not to see. Why? Because I understand wisdom. I don't search for things. The devil cannot get me to get my eyes in the wrong direction. If, if he ever tries to get me to watch something that, he do, that, that God doesn't want me to watch, I just say no. Just easy. I stay in the strength of my anointing. People that guard their eyes are more anointed than those that don't. People that guard their ears are more anointed. If you study people, the only people that struggle are people that hear things that God is not saying, watch things that God is not watching. So they struggle. It, it, it begins to bubble over into their, their walk with God. Then you can't come into the sea as anointed because you're occupied by demonic sight. Saints, if you understand, write me, demonic sight. Now, saints, demonic sight is so dangerous. Why is demonic sight so dangerous? Because demonic sight does not leave you immediately. Demonic sight will fight you for days. Demonic sight will fight you for years. Have you ever met somebody and they said, oh, Johnny did something to me a long time ago. And you're like, where, how long did you know Johnny? That was 17 years ago. I was 17 years. Dad, Johnny still, you still talking about what Johnny did? Now, why does that happen? In the spirit, Satan has created a sight system for bondage. Not a sight system for the prophetic, not the sight system for prosperity, but the sight system for bondage. And why did I say prosperity? Because the Bible said, if you believe the prophet, so shall you prosper. So the prophetic sight causes you to prosper in your soul. Now, the devil don't want you to prosper in your soul. He wants your soul to go downwards. He wants your soul to be in bondage. He wants your soul to be weak. Because watch, when the soul is weak, your soul sins. See, saints, I want you to see this. A lot of times you don't see the danger of what you're focusing on, but it just causes you to sin. At the end of the day, you end up sinning. Why? Because that's demonic sight for you. Demonic sight don't produce anything but error and sin and weakness and disobedience to God. Now, saints, angels of God, God also uses them to impart. an atmosphere into your life so that you can see what Jesus wants you to see. When Balaam was going with that donkey, the Bible said that the donkey began to see the angel. What, what happened? The angel created a atmosphere for even the donkey to see in the spirit. The angel was sent really to stop Balaam, but the angel imparted a realm to, to the donkey for the donkey to see. Saints, can animals 
move in the prophetic? Yes. Most, most animals are prophetic. For the raven to locate Elijah, the raven became prophetic. And saints, let me just say this. Most times God has to use animals in the prophetic because people won't let, let God use them. Remember, Jesus told them, go loose that donkey and bring it to me. Jesus was using the donkey prophetically. Remember, there was donkey uh, uh, lions in the lion's den. God shut their mouths. Why? Them, them lions fell underneath the prophetic anointing. Now, saints, I want you, I want you to stay with me. We in Samuel. We in uh, God been having me uh, meditate on Samuel a lot. Samuel has been a powerful uh, scripture. The book of Samuel. I've been meditating on that. You always want to find scriptures and meditate on them. When you find scriptures and you meditate on them, you become dangerous. Always remember this. Meditating on scripture is the atmosphere of your soul being enveloped by God. And so now God can say anything to you at any given time. He can speak to you at any given time. And the power of the Lord begin to increase. Now, saints, look, we in a... Uh, We're in uh, First Samuel. chapter 19. Now look at this thing. This is real powerful. Now saints, I want you to understand the spirit realm more. We in Proverbs, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 18. Now watch this. The Bible said David fled and escaped. Who is he fleeing from? He's fleeing from Saul. So we see in the text right here, he's fleeing from Saul and he's running and he comes to Samuel. Now I'm talking about the seer and I'm talking about the spirit realm. Look, look what the Bible says, saints. It says in verse 18, chapter 19 of 1 Samuel, chapter 19, verse 18. He comes to Samuel at Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. So you see, here is um, here is Saul and he's running. He's running to the prophet. Look what it says in verse 18. And he and Samuel went and dwelt in Nail. Now saints, I want you to see this. We in verse 19. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David as is at Naoth in Ramah. Now, saints, I want you to see this. These are demons, and they are spiritual spies. I want you to see this, saints. In the realm of the spirit, there are demons that stalk you. In the realm of the spirit, there are demons that stalk you. Listen, I want you to see this. This is why... There are times when you can get free from a person, from a place or something, and then they still find your location. Why? Because these are stalking demons. If you look at 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 19, 
it said, and it was told to Saul. In the spirit realm, these are demons that are reporting to Satan. I want you to hear me, saints. This is why you have to have wisdom on what you speak publicly, on what you say, on what you do, on what you release to people. Because listen, stalking demons report to Satan. So what happens is in the spirit realm, there's a report going off and telling your secret. That's why sometimes you can say, I'm going to move into this house by this and this time. And then all of a sudden, the deal just fall through. You went go tell people. You released it. These stalking demons, they, they report to Satan and they let Satan know, hey, let's stop her. Let's see if we can delay this. Let's see if we can abort this. Let's see if we can cancel this. Saints, I'm showing you in scripture. This is 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 19. It said it was told to Saul. Saul in this text represents Satan. And watch. The demons know the location of David. They said, Saul, he's at Naoth. So the, 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 the demons know the location of David. They know where he is. They were stalking him and they said, hey, we know where he at, Saul. He's at nail. You got to be cautious of this. This is why if God delivers you from a person, a place, a thing, that's why sometimes the person, place, a thing will keep on following you. You wonder how? Because in the spirit realm is a stalking demon. Demons that stalk you, they know your location even after you're, you're trying to get away. Now, saints, watch this thing. Now, in verse 18, it said that David fled, he escaped. So David is in a situation where he has to escape. He has to get out. He has to leave. Now, they're in Naoth. This is a place in the spirit. Now, saints, I want you, if you take a note, write this down. Naoth. It represents a place of rest. Naoth represents a place of deliverance. It represents a place where you just came out of a situation that was hectic, that came to destroy you. Now you have a resting place. Now you have a prophetic atmosphere for you to recover, for you to be restored, for you to regain strength, for you to regain the anointing on your life, for you to step back into the atmosphere of God, for you to step back into your confidence, your boldness, your place where you're no longer struggling, and God is healing your wounds. I want you to see this. Naoth is a place where God is healing your wounds. Wherever you was wounded, wherever you were brokenhearted, wherever you was uh, fought, now you're in a place of rest. Naoth. Now Samuel and David goes there together. Why? Because you need a prophet. You need a prophet. You need a prophet of God. That's why God will connect you with a prophet of God. He'll have you watch the prophet of God because he's saying this is your connection. You need to be connected to heal. Why? Because there's always someone stronger than you in the spirit realm. And saints, prophets go through so much stuff, so their strength is built up. And prophets go through so much stuff. The Bible says a prophet is without honor in his own house. A prophet is without honor in his own country. Prophets go through so much stuff, so prophets are really built up. Well, let me just not say prophets. A prophet of God. A prophet that God connects you to. Now watch the saints. Look at verse 20. And Saul sends messengers to take David. So watch. These messengers represent principalities. This first realm, it said, and Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of prophets prophesying, And Samuel standing as appointed over them. See, saints, Samuel is moving 
in a supernatural office as a prophet. He's over the prophetic atmosphere. Saints, I want you to see this. A lot of times, the, the, the Lord will send a prophet to you that creates an atmosphere even for other prophets. Samuel is creating an atmosphere for other prophets to move. Now, these prophets are underneath Samuel's mantle. He's high in the anointing. He's high in rank. He's high in grace. He's high in power. He's high in, in, in the mantle of, of the prophetic. Now watch this, saints. Look what it say. It said, verse 20, Saul sends messengers. These messengers are principalities. Whenever you are in the first level of prophecy, satanic messengers are going to be sent to your life. Now watch this, saints. I want you to catch this. The Bible said Saul sent messengers. So these were spirits that came with another message. Oh, saints, just stay with me. I, I know that there are going to be people that's going to come on here that's going to release dustiness. It's okay. Don't worry about that. Stay with this word, saints. Stay focused. If you got to move, uh, you move your comments, move your comments. But hear the word of the Lord. Here, watch this. Look, look saints, verse 20. In chapter 19, 1 Samuel, it said, and Saul sent messengers. So these messengers are lying messengers. These messengers have come with a lying message. This mess these messengers, they are carrying the satanic to stop the prophetic. You have to be cautious of this in your own life. There'll be people that will come to you that come to stop the prophetic anointing with a wrong message to take you out of the flow of the spirit, get you focused on something God don't want you to focus on. And now you cannot flow in the grace that God had you in. Why? Because your ears are open up to something God didn't want you to hear. Because God didn't want you to hear that. Now you done stopped in the spirit. And it don't matter what you do to try to come out of it, you're stopped. Saints, do you know what a dam is? A dam is something I believe that's in the river that can stop the flow of the waters. A lot of times you get dammed. Why? Because something is stopping the flow of the Holy Ghost in your life. Because you heard something. Because your eyes saw something. Because you, you, you entertained something. Now it has messed up your flow. These are the messengers that Satan send when the prophetic anointing is on you. Now, saints, stay with me. In, in 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 20, Saul represents Satan. And Satan is sending an attack. And the attack is dealing with messengers. Why? Because these prophets and, and Samuel are messengers in themselves, but they're messengers of God. Wow. So these messengers are being sent, sent from the satanic kingdom to stop the message of the Holy Ghost, to stop the message of the prophetic, to stop the message of the anointing. Why? Because saints in the spirit realm, Samuel is highly ranked. And Saul is after David, but David is underneath his covering. When you're underneath a prophetic covering, messengers are going to be sent to you that are going to lie to you and mess up your flow. Hear me very clearly. This is so powerful, saints. David did not have messengers sent to him until he comes underneath the ministry and the covering of Samuel. The covering of Samuel is threatening the satanic kingdom. So now Satan is sending messengers to get him out of the covering. Watch what begins to happen. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 20. It said, when the messengers came, they saw the company of prophets prophesying and Samuel standing as appointed over them. So what's going on? Samuel is the overseer of the prophetic. His mantle is covering the prophetic. His mantle is over the prophetic. Look what begins to happen. 
it says the spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul. And they also prophesied, my God. When you get underneath a strong man of God, a major prophet, their mantle is so strong that even when you hear wrong voices, their voice will outweigh the wrong voice. My God, hear me. A major prophet is carrying such a major dimension of the spirit of Jesus Christ. He's carrying such a heavy anointing that even when someone comes and lies to you, their voice will speak in the back of your ears. Their voice is so strong that it will echo even when they're not saying anything to you. See, saints, the prophetic anointing was so strong on Samuel that Saul, which represents Satan, sends messengers, which represent principalities. And as a result, what begins to happen? The principalities have been sent to take all of the prophets and David out of the prophetic atmosphere. But instead, they fall underneath the same anointing as Samuel. This is why when a man of God is ministering, his enemies come to watch him. Why? Because his mantle is so strong that even the messengers of Satan have to sit and watch. Oh, some of y'all will catch that later. Some of you all will catch that later. Some of you all will catch that later. Saints, a man of God's accusers are not discrediting him. The fact that he has accusers, it means that his mantle is so strong. That the satanic kingdom have to accuse him with hopes of people falling away. But the anointing is so strong that even them are being sent. Oh my God, watch that. Verse 20, it said that the messengers of Saul, they came underneath the prophetic anointing. And they also prophesied. Watch this, verse 21. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers and they prophesied likewise. Oh, Zeremando Lohosia, Repe. Saints, do you see what they say? It said that when he finished sending the principalities, these first group of messengers, now he's sending another group of messengers. Who are these mess messengers? Their powers. Oh, my God. My God. The first group of messengers were principalities. Thank you, April. Thanks. That's uh, Ephesians 6, 12. They were principalities. Now he sends another group of demons, messengers. These are powers. I want you to see this, saints. And the Bible said when he sends these powers, these powers begin to prophesy as well the mantle of Samuel. Oh my God, watch this here. Look at verse 22. Look at verse 22. No, verse 21. And Saul sent messengers again the third time and they also prophesied. Who are these third messengers? These third messengers are we have principalities and powers. These are rulers of the darkness of this age. My God. Saints, do you see this? This is so powerful. He sends the first messengers in verse 20, chapter 19, 1 Samuel. Those were principalities. He sends another group of messengers in verse 21. Those were powers. He sends another group of messengers in verse 21. These are rulers. Of the darkness of this age. Wow. Saints, I want you to stay with me. 
This is the satanic ring. And the Bible said in verse 21, it said that they prophesied also. Why? Because the mantle of Samuel is so strong. The prophetic anointing on him is so strong that the devil is sending. He's sending the demonic to deceive. And saints, the mantle of Samuel is protecting David, my God. That's why you have to stay underneath your prophet of God. When Jesus anoints a prophet for your life, you have to stay underneath that prophet of God. Why? Because that prophet is protecting you in the spirit realm from messengers of Satan. Principalities, number one. Powers, number two. Uh, rulers of the darkness of this age, number three. And saints, you don't see it. You don't know it, but God is using the mantle of your prophet to protect you. Okay, watch this here. Let's go to verse 22. Now, Satan, which represents Saul, he sends three different group of, group of messengers. He sends them to get David, which is a man of God, to destroy him. Now, they cannot access David because David is underneath a major prophet. David is underneath a man of God that is high in rank. A prophet of God that is very close to the Lord. A prophet of God that's very anointed. He's heavenly anointed. He's heavenly, uh, he's heavenly grace. He has a, a, a strong mantle on his life. He's a covering for people. Watch this here. Look what it say in verse 22. So after he sends principalities, powers, and rulers of the darkness of this age, look at verse 22. Then he went also to Ramah. So saints, now here comes Satan himself. Wow. Saints, I want you to see this. Satan sent principalities, powers, rulers. Now he's coming himself. Wow. Verse 22. Now here comes Saul, which represents Satan himself. That's why I told you, saints, there are seasons when demons are fighting you. There are seasons where you're fighting Satan himself. When Jesus was being tempted 40 days and 40 nights, that last temptation was from Satan himself. He was being tempted by demons. But then on that last temptation, that was Satan himself that took him up on the mountain, that told him, turn the stone into bread. Now he was battling the spirit of Satan. This is why. If he would have failed at that time, he would have canceled out the whole plan of God. Watch this here. Verse 22, it said, then he went to Ramah also himself, and he came to a great well that is in Suku, And he asked and said, where is Samuel and David? See, saints, when you're a major prophet or when you're underneath a major prophet, Samuel was the major prophet. David was underneath the major prophet. If you look in the text, the Bible said, where is Samuel and David? Satan is asking for the major prophet and the person underneath the major prophet look in the text Lucifer is looking for them you wonder why your life come underneath attack when you connect with a true man of God you wonder why your life come underneath a time of attack and all type of strange things begin to happen why because you're David that major prophet is Samuel and Satan is saying where is they my God my God. Satan is asking, where is Samuel and where is David? See, Saint Satan pursues you when you come to another realm in the spirit, when you overcome principalities, when you overcome powers, when you overcome the rulers of the darkness of this age. Satan begins to search for you. Look what Satan said. He said, this is Saul speaking, but Satan is saying really in the text, where? Where is he? Where is the major prophet? Where is David who's underneath his covering? My God. See, saints, not only does the covering come underneath major attack, but those that are being covered. 
Why did the Bible talk about uh, uh, Satan being a wolf? Because he comes. We know that story of the three little piggies or whatever. The big bad wolf. He's considered a wolf because he knows who's covering and he knows who's being covered. Wow. Saints, just stay with me. Look at verse 22. He asks where is Samuel and David? And one said, they are at Naoth in Ramah. So they give, the demons are reporting to Satan and telling him this is their location. We've been stalking them. We know where they at. We know that they underneath JHM. <laughs> we know that they underneath Prophet Joshua. Well, let's, let's go find them. Let's go look to see where they are. Let's go see if we can damage them. Let's see if we can destroy them. Watch this, saints. Verse 23. And he goes to Naoth. This is Satan, which, which Saul represents Satan in this text. It said he goes to Naoth. And the spirit of God was upon him also. My God. Listen. This is Satan going to go attack David and Samuel, the major prophet and, and, and David that's underneath the major prophet. And he falls underneath the same anointing that they're kept. Look at verse 23. The spirit of God was upon him also. My God. Repe. Randa Ravasua. Look at this verse 23 And he prophesied Wow The power of God is so strong Upon this major prophet Samuel That even Satan has to say What he's saying My God Saints do you wonder why your life changed When you come underneath a prophet of God Because even the demons that been lying Against your destiny They have to start saying what your prophet is saying that's why things begin to change. That's why your finances begin to change. Because the demon that was saying that you're going to be in lack has to start saying wealth of the wicked coming to you. The demon that said that you were sick, it has to say what your major prophet is saying. By his stripes ye are healed. What begins to happen, saints? The devil has to speak the report of the Lord. When you come underneath a major prophet of God, when you're sitting underneath prophet Joshua Ho, the devil got to say it. What your prophet is saying. Saints, you never heard this before. You never heard this preached nowhere. The devil has to say what your prophet is saying. When you're under, that's why you got to fight to stay connected to your man of God. Fight to stay connected to prophet Joshua. Hall. Why? Because the words of the enemy have to submit to the words of the prophet. Since the devil began to prophesy, what was prophesying mean? He had to say whatever Samuel was saying. He came to attack David. David was underneath the covering of major prophet Samuel. And he has to obey the prophecy and the prophetic word of Samuel. Saints, when God puts you underneath a prophet Joshua Holmes, you have to fight to stay underneath the prophet Joshua Holmes. Because the devil has to agree and submit to the report of your prophet. There's a rank in the spirit. That's why we go underneath so much attack. Because the devil knows that if you sit, David, underneath this man of God. And you let him teach you in the prophetic. And you let him rule your mind with the anointing and bring you into godly thoughts. Then I will have to submit to the anointing that's on him. And whatever he's prophesying over you, my God, whatever he's speaking over you, I have to speak it to. His word will become my word. His decree will become my decree. Says, why do you think that, that we prophesy to people and they get brand new houses? There's so many people. I prophesy to people in JHM. They, got, they built houses from the bottom up. They built houses. I'm not talking about buy a house. They built a house. Why? Because the devil that was saying you're going to be homeless had to submit to the word of building a house. And they had to listen 
and submit to the prophetic word and speak it as well. Saints, this is what goes on in the spirit realm. That's why the Bible says, if you believe the prophet, you shall prosper. Because when you believe a prophet, you're coming underneath the covering of that prophet, that prophet of God. And the demon that is sent to attack your life has to speak the same word of that prophet. But you got to stay loyal. You got to stay submitted. You got to stay focused. You got to protect the man of God. You got to pray for the man of God. You can't be someone that's shady. You can't be someone that listens to lies. You got to be in a covenant with that prophet of God because the covering that's on his life is protecting you from principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this age and the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. Saints, if you look in the text, it was Samuel that was defeating the principality for David. David could not defeat them. That's why he ran from them. In verse uh, 19, uh, verse 18, he was running from the principalities. He was running from the powers. He ran to Samuel because he had a revelation that the spirit of God was upon Samuel to set him free from every single demonic activity in his life. Saints, I come to tell you, you have to stay close to your Samuel. Saints, watch what begins to happen in the text. Samuel is covering David from everything that the devil is throwing at him. Now, it's not that David is not being attacked. David is being attacked, but the covering of Samuel is protecting him. David is being targeted, but the covering of, of Samuel is protecting him. David is being bombarded with opposition and, 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 and enemies, but Samuel. And his mantle is protecting him. Saints, this is the powerful thing. When God sends a major prophet to your life, you have to fight to stay connected to that major prophet. Why? Because in that major prophet, Jesus is using them to deliver you. He's using them to set you free. He's using them to protect you. He's using them in the spirit realm to stand in the gap for you. That's why they go through so many things. Because they are sent to stand at the front of the war zone. Saints, watch this here. Samuel is being opposed now by Satan himself. And Satan has to fall down and prophesy. So in the battle of Satan and a prophet of God, Satan cannot beat the prophet of God. The major prophet of God is carrying more authority and power. The major prophet is carrying so much power that even Satan comes himself and he's not able to defeat the major prophet. Wow. Saints, that's why Jesus said, I did not come to get rid of the law of the prophets. I came to fulfill it. Why did Jesus say this? Because the law of the prophet is eternal. Saints, I want you to hear me in the spirit. The law of the prophet is eternal. God will never remove the prophet. That's why Jesus said he came up from hell. He came, he fulfilled all things and he gave some prophets. Why? Because God never took away the prophetic law. He said, I'm not going to take away this law. I'm just going to fulfill it. Meaning I'm going to make it full and I'm going to fill it. He's going to fill it with glory. 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 That's all. But he never said, I'm going to take it away. Why? Because the prophet comes to cover you in the spirit. From the demons that are after you. See, saints, I want you to see this. Catch this in the spirit. David was delivered from these spirits. They came searching for David. And David had to run from them. These, this represent demons of your past. See, saints, if you're going to stay in the spirit, if you're going to make it to your destiny, you need that major prophet. You need Samuel that's going to stand with you and cover you and release the anointing upon you when the enemy is trying to get you into lies and falsehood and bring you into all type of things that's going to destroy you. You need the prophet, the major prophet. Saints, 
This is so powerful. This is so powerful because saints in the text, what God was revealing that even principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this age, even them, they do not have the power to defeat a major prophet of God. When, when God is using the prophet in your life, even spirits that are great in rank cannot defeat you. I want you to catch something in the text. You notice, David never put his mouth on Samuel. If you look in the text, you never see David fighting the covering of Samuel. My God. You, you never see David saying, I'm a man of God too. Wow. David humbles himself. And makes himself of none avail. He's not trying to lift up himself. He's not saying, oh, I have a ministry too. Oh, I'm anointed too. Wow. Wow. He's not saying, listen, God called me too. I'm a king too. I'm anointed. I'm prophetic too. I'm a prophet. I can see too. He's not saying none of that. Why? Because he's humble, of, uh, humble enough to know that God is not dealing with my, uh, my credentials. He's dealing with my safety and he's sending me help from heaven. He's sending me one of his major prophets. So I'm going to submit. never see David tell Samuel, hey, I'm a king. You never see David say, hey, I, I prophesied the Lord Jesus in hell. I, I talked about him in Psalm chapter 22. I wrote the whole book of Psalms. I, I, I did this and did this. I killed Goliath. You never see uh, you never see that David is uplifting anything in the presence. Why? Because he knows how to submit to the seer. He knows how to submit to the prophetic anointing and he knows that I'm going to be protected. I must surrender and submit so that he can protect me. And saints, if you notice, all through the text, the devil cannot touch David. They're after David. They're after David's life. But as long as he's submitted to Samuel, they can't touch him. Principalities couldn't touch them. Powers couldn't touch them. Rulers of the darkness of this age couldn't touch them. And the spiritual host of wickedness himself. Remember the Bible said that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. My God. Nothing in the satanic kingdom could have touched him. Because he's underneath a major prophet of God. Saints, you don't see that David prayed one time. All he did was submit to the prophet of God. There's a lot of people that's praying. But God is sending a prophet to you to help you. To unlock you, to deliver you, to help you, to bless you, to prosper you. And the deliverance is not just in you praying. The deliverance is in you submitting to the way that God wants to help you. Wow. Wow. The devil could not touch him as long as he stayed connected to Samuel. Saints. I'm telling you tonight, today, this morning, as I stand underneath the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, when the Holy Spirit sent a Samuel to your life, humble yourself. It doesn't matter. Humble yourself. Stay in a low place with Jesus. Seek the face of Jesus so that you don't miss the prophet. Seek the face of Jesus so that you won't mishandle the prophet. Seek the face of Jesus so that you won't lose your prophet. The prophet is not sent to make you feel less. 
prophets come to raise you up to the level that they are on. Saints, why do you think I got a personal mentorship? Why do you think that I'm in part in preaching the gospel so strong? I'm raising people up to my realm. You meet a major prophet, they are not about just you serving them. They serve you with the word. They serve you with the anointing. They serve you with the gospel. They serve you with the presence of Jesus. As David was submitting to, to Samuel, Samuel was submitting to God. And Samuel was releasing the anointing on David's life to be covered and protected. It wasn't a competition thing. David was in a low place with God because he knew he needed deliverance. He knew that he needed help. He knew that he needed someone that was anointed enough to stand in the gap and be a prophet to his life. And he humbled himself and God anointed him and delivered him and covered him and gave him victory and gave him dominion and restored his life and restored his anointing and restored his atmosphere and restored justice to him and restored victory to him and restored blessing and deliverance and angelic atmosphere and the prophetic anointing to his life. It was a restoration of God upon David. David was underneath an attack. But the major prophet was covering him. I don't usually do this, but I'm hearing the Holy Spirit speak to me. And the Lord is telling me to honor with a seed of forty one dollars. Sow it into JHM this prophetic ministry, this prophetic anointing, this prophetic grace. As we are preaching the gospel and traveling, a seed of just $41 into this anointing. Those of you all that, that are on this line, pray in the Holy Ghost. I want you to name this seed Prophetic prosperity and covering seed. Because you're going to prosper in your way and be covered from every satanic attack against your life. The Lord will not let evil succeed against your mind, your thoughts, your future, your family, your body, your children. The devil will not let he will, he will not succeed. The same way the covering of Samuel covered him from principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this age and spiritual host of wickedness. The same way the anointing. Thank you, Tiff. Those of you all that are sowing, you can text your seed. Prophet JHM compound word to 77977 just $41 all my daughters on here all my sons on here I want you to write that amount and name the seed prophetic prosperity and covering prophetic prosperity only $41 only because the Holy Spirit is telling me to do this If you are on here, you can click the button donate and donate to JHM Ministries. If you saw it via P.O. Box, P.O. Box 358, Cannondale, Texas, 76060. I want you to connect with this anointing. I 
I want you to sow in obedience to the Holy Spirit. $41 into the gospel, into the work of God, into the prophetic anointing and name it prophetic anointing and prophetic covering. $41. Every single person sow that seed. There's some of you are going to say, Prophet, I'm going to stand with you. I know that Jesus is sending you to the nations. I know that he using you. I want to be a part of the work of God. I'm going to sow that 141. I'm going to sow that 241. I'm going to sow that 341. I'm going to stand with that 541. I'm going to help you preach the gospel. I'm going to help you pay for your meetings. I'm going to help you be a blessing to the people of God. As we travel, since we do so many things for the gospel, it's more than just preaching. It's reaching the hurting heart. Those of you on this line, as the Spirit of God is moving, sow that seed. There's the cash app. Thank you, daughter, Sharika. If you are sowing via cash app, there's the information that you can sow. If you are sowing cash app, there's the information that you can sow. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me, he said, son, tell the people to sow and honor me with that $41 seed. Why? Because we're in the presence of the Holy Ghost. His power is upon this word. His glory is upon this word. And as you're sowing, you're releasing a supernatural protection in the spirit realm where Jesus, the son of God, is using the prophetic anointing on my life to cover you. To empower you to prosper. To empower you. To be protected. Those of you all that are on this line. There, there's the email. Uh, or the mail. The mailing address for the ministry. is P.O. Box 358 Cannondale, Texas. The Holy Spirit is releasing a wave. He's releasing a wave. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. He that hath an ear, I hardly ever ask you for seed on it. But the Holy Spirit told me. He said, tell the people to sow into the, my vision. Sow into my anointing. Sow into my power. He told me, he said, son, tell the people to sow. Malakalada. Randa Basoto. Cradell, bless you. Bless you. He that hath an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Though as you're sowing, name your seed prophetic prosperity and covering. $41. $41. I only ask because the Holy Spirit said, as I stand in the presence of Jesus Christ, the Spirit of the Lord told me, sow this seed into the gospel for souls, for the work of God, for the gospel, the power and the demonstration. Not many ministers are able to do what we do. There's a special anointing on Prophet Joshua Holmes, a special presence and glory from heaven upon my life. To heal the sick. To preach this gospel with power. And as we're going forth with these meetings. You. Are the angels. Now saints. I want you to meditate on Matthew chapter 10 verse 41. The Bible said if you receive a prophet. In the name of a prophet. You'll receive a prophet's reward. I want you to meditate. On that scripture, as you're sowing, you're meditating, you're receiving the prophet of God, your way shall prosper. Your covering shall be established. No evil shall touch you. Father, in Jesus' name, I only said what you told me to say. 
I only said what you told me to say. I didn't add to your word. I didn't take away from it. Holy Spirit, you told me. To tell the people to honor you with a seed of $41. Father, as I stand in your presence, Holy Spirit, I decree the blessing on every single person. I decree the blessing as they're sown into your gospel, as they're sown into your work, as they're sown into your anointing. I decree the blessing over their life. I bless their seed. Those of you who are overseas, we have many partners. Those of you all that help the ministry, I want you to sow you can click the donate button. Or if you have PayPal, we have a PayPal. Just go on Joshua Home 777 on Twitter. And you can click on the PayPal link on Twitter. And it'll just take you straight to PayPal. At Joshua Home 777. My name 777. Make sure you don't go to a wrong account. It's the one that have over 7,000 followers. You can so via PayPal or click the link, donate, or text Prophet JHM to 77977. You can text in your phone, Prophet JHM 777. Bless each and every one of you all. The Holy Spirit. As you have given the instruction, I decree the anointing of the prophetic upon their life right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak over every single person as they're believing your prophet, Father. As they're heeding your word, I decree and I declare the anointing that breaks the yoke. The anointing that covers your precious people. I decree the anointing right now over every single person as your prophet, Jesus. And I decree every single person shall prosper as they're obeying your Holy Spirit instructions. I decree that they shall prosper, they shall increase, and the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost shall invade their atmosphere all this weekend miracles favor grace anointing right now in Jesus mighty name I decree and I declare and I bless your saints right now saints receive it right now prophetic prosperity and covering seed so your seed saints $41 into JJ this powerful ministry of the Holy Ghost. This powerful ministry of the Holy Spirit. So. 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 God. 
Father, I bless your people. I bless your sons and daughters. In the name of Jesus, I bless your sons and your daughters. Malakalada. Malakalabasi. Repe kerede. In the name of Jesus, I speak blessings right now. I speak blessings over your life as you're sowing into souls, as you're sowing into the gospel, as you're sowing into the meetings of God, the work of God, the vision of God, the prophetic anointing of God, the prophet of God. Right now, in Jesus' name, I decree prosperity. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I release blessings.
God shall say, I shall cause little children to sit at your feet. You shall raise them up in the prophetic, and my grace shall be with you. Latoya Span, God said, I'm giving you a fresh anointing at your workplace. I shall begin to favor you and anoint you. I'll give you grace for dominion. The Lord said, I'll begin to speak to you. I'll begin to show you things. And I'll bless you, says the Spirit of God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The anointing. The anointing. There's power and glory. He's changing your story. There's a new grace, a fresh anointing, fresh power, fresh anointing. Prophesy, 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 prophesy to your dry bones. Prophesy. To your cell phone, prophesy to your new home, prophesy, cause you're not alone, there's angels around you, angels surround you, prophesy, 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 oh yes, oh yes. There's a new anointing in the glory. Oh, yes. $41. Prophetic prosperity and coverings. Oh, yes. Every seed is going into us. Saving souls. April the 26th, 27, 28, 29. Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference. Make sure you come. It's free to all. You don't have to do anything to come to this meeting. Just come. I want to be a blessing to you, impart to you. Feed your spirit. Feed your life. Cause the anointing of the Holy Ghost to be fresh upon you. Unlock you. Activate you in the prophetic. It's amazing. Don't miss it. The Wisdom Center, 4051. Denton Highway, 761-117. Dr. Mike Murdoch is amazing. Don't miss it for anything. My God. Oh, Ramasia. Robocosepala. Get your seat in the ground, saints. Prophetic prosperity and covering seed. $41. There's a fresh anointing. There's a fresh anointing. Those of you all sowing, my daughters, write the information. My sons, write the information for people to sow. Those of you all that sowing the information is coming on the screen. You can text Prophet JHM to 77977. Click the donate button on Facebook or via PayPal. Go to at Joshua Home 777 on Twitter.com and just click the link. You can sow via PayPal. Just $41 into the gospel. Into the work of God. Just $41. Into souls being one and bodies being healed. Sow your seed, $41. Prophetic, prosperity, and covering seed. April the 26th. April the 27th. April the 28th. April the 29th. Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference. The Wisdom Center. 4051 Denton Highway. 761-117. Get your seat in the ground, saints. Oh, yes. There's an anointing, saints. There's a glory. The Holy Spirit told me to have people sow that seed 
of $41. Some of you are going to sow more than $41. you are going to say, Prophet, I want that double covering. I want that double prosperity. I'm going to sow $141. i am going to sow $241. I'm going to help you preach the gospel. I'm going to help you do these meetings. I'm going to help you win souls. Sow that seed, say. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Every service at 7 p.m. August the April the 26, 27, 28, 29. Five services. The power of God. Thank you, yourself. Thank you, son. Bless you. Everybody. Oh, yes. One, the fielder. The Holy Spirit said, I'm giving you fresh strength. I'm giving you fresh anointing. I'm delivering you from every trap that Satan is trying to bring to get you to fornicate or miss me. The Holy Spirit says, sweet Mary shall come upon you. I shall bless you with a man of God. And the Lord shall say unto you that you shall laugh and you shall rejoice and experience my salvation. And I shall cause. One, I'm hearing God saying, vehicle favor. Vehicle favor. The Holy Spirit said vehicle favor. Melakosia, Cynthia Pointer, you sowed that seed of $1,000. The Holy Spirit said that I shall place upon thee the anointing of Solomon. I shall increase thee and I shall cause your hands to prosper. Tiffany, God said, I'm releasing a fresh hedge around your mind, a fresh hedge around your life, a fresh hedge of my spirit around your thoughts. And the Lord shall say, I shall bless thee and give you the desires of your heart. I shall cover thee and anoint thee and promote thee. You are blessed with the blessing of a prophetess. And God shall say, I shall raise you up. I shall give you grace and mighty anointing to run and not be weary, walk in that faith. And my angels are flowing in your room, saith God. I'm sending a wave of angels. Oh yes, the anointing. Oh yes, oh yes, receive it. Oh yes. glory of God where you are. Receive the glory of God where you are. Receive the glory of God. Receive the glory of God. Oh yes. Oh yes. Receive the glory of God where you are. Oh yes. Derek Murphy. The Holy Spirit said I'm empowering your prophetic the anointing of a seer shall rest upon you. I'll cause the work of your hands to prosper. I'll give you grace and glory. And I will not withhold any good thing from you. Collect Thomas. The Holy Spirit said, I'm beginning to open up your eyes. The angels of the prophetic are moving with you. I'll begin to anoint your hands. I'll begin to bless you and visit you in the night hour, says the Spirit of the living God. Maharapa, repeke de korama, rapa soramanda. So you'll see $41, $141, $241. Sow into the gospel. Sow into the gospel.
I decree glory. I decree power. I decree in Jesus' name. Oh, yes.
in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, yes. We 
we pray prophesy to your travel oh yes oh yes To your tribe, prophesy to your cell phone, prophesy to your new home, prophesy, cause you're not alone. There's angels around you, angels surround you, prophesy, prophesy. Prophesy. Thank you so much, Faith. Faith, thank you so much, daughter. Oh, yes. Thank you, daughter. Thank you, Tim. Princess. Hey. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. to touch you. I don't care if you lame, if you can't walk, you want to come out your walker. So many people have came out of their walker. Come. The power of Jesus Christ is going to be there. Holtam City, Texas. Dr. Mike Murdoch, the Wisdom Center. Thank you, daughter.
bless you, say, share this broadcast. Invite your followers.